The electric streetcar was once the chief mode of public transit in Saskatoon. As early as 1911, the city had debated the need to have a public transit system. When the British company contracted to provide the city with a street railway was unable to exercise its franchise, Saskatoon undertook to build the street railway as a municipal enterprise. January 1st, 1913 was the first day of operation of the Saskatoon Municipal Railway. Snow that had fallen the evening before would delay the departure of six streetcars from the barns on Avenue C North. After the sweeper car had completed its work, the inaugural run proceeded without incident. During the next four decades, the streetcar service would face many challenges. Floods and blizzards, power failures, lack of heat in the early streetcars, brakes that failed to hold, streetcars that jumped the track, thefts from the fare box, and university student antics. Change, however, was on the horizon. By the mid-20th century, most municipalities were dismantling their streetcar systems. Saskatoon would follow the trend. The streetcar chapter of Saskatoon's transportation history would end on November 10, 1951, with the last run of Saskatoon's electric street railway. Join local history in remembering and celebrating Saskatoon streetcars in this photographic exhibition. The electric streetcar was once the chief mode of public transit in Saskatoon. As early as 1911, the city had debated the need to have a public transit system. When the British company contracted to provide the city with the street railway was unable to exercise its franchise, Saskatoon undertook to build the street railway as a municipal enterprise. January 1, 1913 was the first day of operation of the Saskatoon Municipal Railway. Snow that had fallen the evening before would delay the departure of six streetcars from the barns on Avenue C North. After the sweeper car had completed its work, the inaugural run proceeded without incident. During the next four decades, the street car service would face many challenges, floods and When the Stone and Webster Engineering Corporation of Boston, Massachusetts was awarded the contract to design and build the Saskatoon Municipal Railway, crews began laying track in June 1912. At the time, street railways were built largely with manual labor and animal power. Delays in securing shipments of material and the lack of good weather were chief factors in delaying progress. The construction crew is seen laying the curved track at the corner of 20th Street and Avenue A South. Engineer Locke of the Stone and Webster Corporation reported on June 28, 1912, that laying the track at the 19th Street end of 2nd Avenue was to begin, and that grading was in progress to get the road in readiness for the rails. Street railway track required exceptionally heavy construction to successfully withstand the rigor of both streetcar and street traffic. On 2nd Avenue, 8 pound 7 inch rails were laid to cope with the heavy traffic on Saskatoon's major street, and because the rails were to be embedded in concrete. The construction crew was working on 2nd Avenue and 21st Street. December 30, 1912, two days before the start of regular service, the first three cars made a trial run on the streets of Saskatoon. The first car left the car barn shortly after 1 o'clock, going up 20th Street in the direction of St. Paul's Hospital. A second car, shown in this photograph, was sent out at about 2 o'clock and went as far as 2nd Avenue, seen here at the King George Hotel and the Under Construction Cairns Department Store. In the morning, Large groups of men were out clearing the tracks of the accumulation of snow and ensuring the system would be in smooth running order. Since practically all of the motormen and conductors were strangers to Saskatoon, it was important for the cars to be tried out and the men acquainted with the streets. On July 16, 1912, work started on the excavation for the new car barns located on the west side of the 300 block of Avenue C North. City Council had earlier bought the Caswell lots at a cost of $31,000 for the Saskatoon Municipal Railway. When completed, the clay brick building housed the initial purchase of 12 streetcars, although the capacity of the barns was 20 or more cars. In addition to the streetcars, the mechanic shop, 
car repair and woodworking divisions, storage and street railway offices were in the barn. To maintain its new fleet of streetcars, the Saskatoon Municipal Railway required an experienced team of employees. The original 1913 shop crew seen standing in the doorway of the car barns included, left to right, Olaf H. Ole Olsen, carpenter, Alexander Sandy Gardner, storekeeper, James P. McKenzie, master mechanic, Jim Anderson, Thomas T. Tom Murray, clerk, David M. Dave Murray, foreman, and John A. Jack Cameron, track foreman. Seen here is a 1913 group photograph of Saskatoon Municipal Railway workers. In July 1912, City Council authorized the purchase of 12 single-truck 32-passenger streetcars from the St. Louis Car Company of St. Louis, Missouri. Purchased at a cost of $5,082 each, the streetcars were double-ended cars with Westinghouse motors and controllers and St. Louis trucks. This interior view of a St. Louis-built car of the type purchased by the city is likely from a manufacturer's prospectus. It was likely made available to Saskatoon to show details of the cars they would be receiving. When the cars arrived in Saskatoon in late 1912, they were assigned the numbers 1 to 12. The instability of the riverbank at East Lake Avenue and the Long Hill would interrupt streetcar service in 1913. When cracks in the riverbank developed and undermined the roadway, streetcar patrons would transfer from one car on the Long Hill to an awaiting car at the top of the hill to complete their journey. The erection of a pile bridge would temporarily solve the problem while city engineers investigated the cause. Work on the Long Hill Bridge started September 1913. The completion of the trestle bridge permitted the resumption of normal street railway service to the end of the rails. A job with the Saskatoon Municipal Railway Service was a highly prized one. A handsome uniform with brass buttons and a cap with identifying badge gave a man an air of authority, and the work was considered superior to occupations that required manual labour. On the first day of operations, the conductors and motormen did not have uniforms, so wore their regular clothing with ribbons on their caps that read SMP Motorman or SMP Conductor. The Saskatoon Local of the Amalgamated Association of Street and Electrical Railway Employees of America was chartered on February 3, 1913. A conductor stands at the door of his streetcar near the Cairns department store. In November 1913, 11 streetcar men were tried for theft from the fare boxes of the street railway. Interest on the part of the public was great, with crowds queuing to get into the courthouse. Out of the 11 conductors and motormen originally placed under arrest, one was committed to prison for two months, another was placed on bail, and a third was allowed to go on suspended sentence. The charge against six of the remaining seven was dismissed owing to the weakness of the evidence. Streetcar number 24 was one of six double-truck, double-ended streetcars purchased from the Preston Car and Coach Company Limited of Preston, Ontario in late 1913. It was soon discovered that the Preston cars could not be used on the east side of the river because they were too heavy for the traffic bridge. The city commissioner would point out to council that four of these cars were always in the barn. A proposal to remodel the cars to reduce the weight was deemed impractical. The problem with the Preston cars was finally solved in 1919, when the city of Calgary offered to exchange seven single-truck, single-ended cars for the six Saskatoon cars.
The Saskatoon Municipal Railway took seriously its obligation to provide dependable public transportation and maintain snowplow sweepers and other snow fighting equipment in an effort to keep the streetcar lanes open. The sweeper could usually handle the downtown areas, but the challenge was to clear the drifts in the outlying district. In this blizzard shot on the Sutherland line, the plow is homemade and mounted on the front of the streetcar. The blizzard of March 15, 1927 paralyzed Saskatoon. One of the worst storms in decades, it stopped streetcar traffic between Sutherland and the city for over 24 hours. Despite the efforts of the street railway's big plow and sweeper, the drifts on this line were exceptionally deep, requiring a good deal of hard work to clear. It took two days for service to resume. Streetcar plunges from the bridge, read the headlines in the local newspapers. When streetcar number four on the exhibition route came down the long hill at about one o'clock on the afternoon of March 3rd, 1922, and neared the bottom of the hill, the brakes, according to its motorman Fred Chapman, refused to hold, sending the streetcar plunging down the river bank. The streetcar turned completely over as it fell down the steep bank to the river's edge. Described as the worst accident in the history of Saskatoon Municipal Railway, amazingly the 20 passengers escaped death. Only six passengers were injured seriously enough to require hospital treatment. Spectators on the bridge and riverbank became so numerous that the police chief was forced to move them on for fear that their numbers and weight would cause a collapse of that structure. Bystanders survey the wreckage of Exhibition Streetcar No. 4 as it appeared shortly after its 30-foot plunge off the end of the traffic bridge. A telephone guy wire at the top of the bridge had torn off the roof of the streetcar as it plummeted down the embankment to the ice below. Upon landing, both sides of the car collapsed, smashed to splinters. The fact that the heavy streetcar was projected over the heads of the passengers is likely the only reason no lives were lost. The accident made people wary of the bridge and of streetcars for some time thereafter. Tram boys beat police as the street railway hockey team captured the championship of the Municipal Hockey League in February 1930. The city police and the street railway teams had battled for the Samson Trophy in a three-game series. The first game was a draw. In the second game, the street railway prevailed with a 2-1 victory. Butch Scharf would score all the goals in the final when the street railway hockey team defeated the city police 3-1. Joseph S. Horan started as a conductor with the Saskatoon Municipal Railway in 1913. He would end his career on November 10, 1951, the date of the last streetcar run. In this 1939 photograph, motorman Joe Horan poses with Mayfair University Line Streetcar No. 12 on Avenue C North near the car barns. The Victory Loan Special was a streetcar provided by the City of Saskatoon as a contribution to the fourth Victory Loan campaign. The streetcar travelled daily on all streetcar lines for a minimum of two hours, encouraging local residents to contribute to the war effort through the purchase of Victory Bonds. On occasional evenings, the streetcar would also carry bands during its trip around town. The official money thermometer charted Saskatoon residents' contributions. In 1943, the National War Finance Committee would present Saskatoon with a framed award of merit for its promotional success in the fourth Victory Loan campaign. On February 4, 1947, the motorman on the Mayfair University streetcar lost control, careening down the Avenue E Hill. The streetcar failed to negotiate the curve at 25th Street and Avenue E, left the tracks, crossed the boulevard, and came to rest in the front yard of Norman Couch's house at 419 25th Street West. It was a wild ride for the more than 50 passengers, and a surprise for the homeowners. No one was seriously injured, 
although the passengers had to leave by the rear since the front door of the streetcar could not be open. An inquiry determined that the brakes had failed because the fuse protecting the compressor motor had blown. Friends and colleagues congratulate William H. Moore, second from left, upon his retirement after completing 37 accident-free years as an operator on November 26, 1950. William Moore, known to his friends as Bill, came to Canada in 1911 and joined the Saskatoon Municipal Railway in 1913 as a conductor. Moore also served 25 years on the Union Executive. The extensive abandonment of street railways did not begin until after the end of World War II. The end of the line for Saskatoon streetcars came on November 10, 1951. After 39 years and 35 million miles travelled, the streetcar was replaced by a fleet of trolley coaches and motor buses. Decorated with flags and marked Last Day 1913-1951, Mayfair University Streetcar No. 51 made its last run with Mike Cardish as the operator. Passengers who loved the streetcar and were sad to see it go took their last rides as a chapter in Saskatoon's transportation history ended. We hope you enjoyed our virtual recreation of Streetcar City. The original show was held from February 12 to March 27, 2014, curated by Ron Jeremko with the assistance of local history staff. We invite you to visit the local history room the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.